Hello, hello, good morning, buenos dias, continuous liners. This is Megan coming to the streets live from Condesa in La Ciudad de Mexico. We're having some electricity issues here in the neighborhood, and um, a lot of the cafes don't have <clears throat> servicio. So I found my one in my neighborhood that does have servicio. Oh, muchísimas gracias. Just in time. Beautiful. It's a big one. Beautiful coffee. Latte has arrived just in the nick of time. <laughs> Buenos dias. Salud. Salud. Hello. Hi, Lynn O'Brien. Hey, you know what just came up in my memories today is your paper mache dragonfly. All by itself. No words. Just your paper mache dragonfly. <laughs> it's so pretty. I would imagine it's still in Mexico. I can't imagine it made the trip back to California. Uh, it's kind of a Mexican thing, but anyways, hope you're doing well. Hello, Sharon. <laughs> All right, it's the last day of May. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? It's the last day of May. My God, 2023 is just screaming by us, isn't it? And um, so this is the last day of our May sessions and um, uh, the May... Uh, continuous line fundamentals, right? So I got a fun day of drawing planned for us. But right now, I have my drawing warm-up book. See that? I hope by now, if you're a participant in this group, I hope that you have a space and a place where you can do your drawing warm-ups. And as a reminder, these are the benefits of continuous line. I know it's backwards. You put, it, a continuous line helps you push through your drawing fears. Continuous line helps you comprehend and prove composition. Continuous line builds confidence. You too can sit out on the street all by yourself talking at full volume to your phone because you have no human friends. <laughs> and you don't mind that there's people all around you who honestly, they don't care. I mean, they look at me for a second and go, what is she doing? She's by, sitting there by herself. Oh, she's talking to her phone. But you know what? If people are, if they're having a conversation with other people, very soon they'll be having a conversation with their phone, right? Because it's what, it's what we all do, right? It's what we do, some more than others, right? I have decided it's worth, I'm not even embarrassed anymore. But at first it was a little like, ooh, people are looking at me, and now I don't care, right? I don't care because... I feel like there's a higher purpose for this, right? I'm encouraging my artist community to practice. It's just like if this, if I was a yoga teacher, I'm online here to encourage you all to stretch before you do your yoga poses. So let's get some stretching done here. What do you say? Can you hear the sounds of the cafe? Let me fix my, my belly, it looks huge. <laughs> Let me see what's going on. Oh, let me just pull my sweatshirt down. That's maybe I'm, I'm hanging out. Everything in the back end is hanging out. <laughs> Are you all enjoying that? <laughs> all righty. So, line, you know what? I kind of have a habit with a pattern with this, right? I kind of, I like to, I just by default, and if I catch myself, I'll stop it and do something else. But by default, I always start as a, in the corner, in the lower left. And I should start in the lower right. You know why? Because it's harder. In fact, I'm going to just re, reposition myself right now. And, of course, the page is curling up, and that is bothering my sensibilities. But that's all right. I'm just going to push through my, um, you know, my, what is that? Like when you um, don't, uh, don't like things to be out of order. What's that called? Um, totally drawing a blank on what that's called. <laughs> But anyways, I'll deal with when the page really starts to curl up, I'll put my binder clip on it. But you see, it's awkward starting in this corner because we don't write, we don't write right to left, right? We, right? Oh my God, how many different ways can you say right? We don't write right to left, right? Here, I'm letting you see the view. I'm going to let you do a little people watching because honestly, it's one of the best things about living in Mexico City. I mean, there's a lot of great things about, I think we're honestly just cities in general. Great people watching. And if you like to draw, if you like to urban sketch and if you like to draw things <laughs> like I do, um, 
it's good to be in a city. It's one of the reasons why I had to move out of San Miguel. I, you know, San Miguel's cute, and I have friends there, and it's lovely. But gosh, it's a small town, and I just, I had drawn everything four times, and I was like, oh my God, give me a city, right? And uh, I had certainly visited Mexico City and always had wondered, could I live here? It feels like I could live here, but everyone makes it sound like it's so scary, right? Oh, Mexico City. Honestly, I mean, I'm going to Chicago next month. That's where I'm from. I'm scared. People are getting shot every day just for doing everyday things, like just walking down the street, going to the beach, going to the store. People are getting shot, right? I'm not turning this into a political thing, but it is weird how... There's all this manufactured fear around Mexico. And sure, there are some, you know, you don't want to just come down here willy-nilly and just be like tiptoe through the tulips. You got to watch your P's and Q's like you do anywhere in the world, right? <clears throat> so I'm preparing myself to go to Chicago. And so I'm kind of listening a little bit closer to what's going on there. You know, Memorial Day, they open the beaches. Well, you know, not just Chicago. There's like... There's open fire. There's not open fire in Mexico, right? Like, I mean, there has been. It's not, you know, it's just like anywhere else in the world. They're dealing with, they're grappling with all sorts of social, political. I mean, the whole the whole world is insane, right? Not just this place or that place. Hello, United States. <laughs> I'd say United States gets an award, though, for being the most insane. Is it just because I'm from there that I feel like that it's most insane? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I know it's not all bad. But the fact that some of these politicians have a chance, politicians who honestly should be in jail, um, for, okay, I'm not going to go there. Anyways. I suppose there's politicians here in Mexico that should be, well, we all know this, that should be in jail, too. Honestly, I think just politicians should be in jail. <laughs> Anywho, so, yeah, I'm preparing to go to Chicago. Uh, my hometown, I have not been there. Last time I was there, Cubs were in the World Series. Barack Obama was president. I remember hearing uh, Poi Dog Pondering at the Goose Club. <laughs> That's all very Chicago speak. The Goose Club was at the airport, I think. What is that? There's a, there's a Goose, Goose Island. There we go. <laughs> Goose Island. Poi Dog Pondering. Jackass Ginger. Yeah, things that you only hear in your hometown, right? So anyways, I'm excited to go back just because I haven't been there in so long. and um, But I'm a little nervous, too. Who cares, though? Honestly, who cares that I'm nervous? You just got to sometimes show up and do the thing, right? Yeah, I'm nervous, but I'm still going to do it. And I'm probably still going to have a great time and see some family and friends. I don't really have much family there anymore. But anyways, um, yeah, and I'm going to draw that city like I've never drawn it before. I mean, I've drawn Chicago. I draw it in my Zoom classes. I draw it. I actually draw it in my dreams. I honestly draw it in my dreams. Um, I drew the Chicago River right at Michigan Avenue, right with the, those little towers on the bridges and the river, and it's right at the to where the river turns around that horrendous blue building that should be destroyed. But um, yeah. So I'm actually drawing Chicago in my dreams. <laughs> and I think that tells me that I'm pretty committed to the drawing thing, right? I'm drawing it in my dreams. I mean, I could still not be committed, but I'm pretty committed, right? I, I love what the drawing thing is teaching me. I love where it's leading me. You know, it's like everyone else. Life has been a little bit scary and uncertain, right? There's been a lot of, lot of uncertainty. And I just feel like, just stay, stay with your line, stay with my drawing, stay, just keep making art, right? Keep making art. Let me have a sip of coffee. It's okay to break your line for <laughs> coffee. Mm. No, I didn't like this coffee for a while, but I think I'm back to liking it. It had that, like, bitter Starbucks burntness. 
Not anymore. It's pretty good. Um, or I'm just used to it, right? I don't put sugar in my coffee anymore, right? So it's like a whole new world. Honestly, it's not nearly as fun without sugar. I mean, it's still delicious. But I just rem I'm thinking back sort of fondly about the little mm, you get from the coffee with sugar, right? <laughs> and now it's just coffee with milk, and it's got the mm, but not it's not as fun. I'm still going to drink it, though. I'm still going to enjoy the heck out of it. I'll get used to it, right? The whole, like, eliminated. I'm not fully eliminated sugar, but I'm just not doing sugar in the morning. Thank you, glucose goddess. Um, boy, the more, more I learn about that program, the more I'm like, gosh, it's so simple, and it really works. The whole thing is, like, you eat things in different order. Instead of having, like, bread. I mean, American breakfasts are, like, the worst in the world. Breads and sugars and jellies and syrups and syrups, um, pancakes. That's all like horrendous stuff to eat first thing in the morning, right? Not that I ever did or since I was a child, but to eat, first thing you got to eat are vegetables. So I eat like a few stalks of broccoli, which is not really hilarious first thing in the morning. I'm telling you, eat a few stalks of broccoli. What am I, 68 years old? And. <sighs> <laughs> but you know what? It feels be it feels better to be healthy. It feels better to do the right thing, right? <laughs> Although I miss those coffee and donuts and cigarette mornings. Oh my God! Um, not really, but I guess there's a bit of romanticizing about it all. Um, yeah. So a few stalks of broccoli first thing in the morning. Delicious. <laughs> and they're not. I don't cook them, so they're like really hearty. Um, I cook them, but not well. And then, um, and then you eat some protein, some meat. And since I am now working with the Cañada de la Virgen, I have uh, beef jerky and my organic grass-fed beef jerky. So I usually I keep it in my pocket and I just nosh on it a little bit. Which, honestly, the meat in the morning is that's a program I can get get down with. <laughs> big juicy steak. Now I'm having some beef jerky, right? And then I can have my coffee without sugar. So if you're with me, I hope you're doing some lines. Not naughty lines, drawing lines. I hope you're drawing your lines, right? This is where... What is that? The devil's in the details? Or is it God is in the details? Something's in the details, and it's very important. Um, but, you know, those who take the time to practice, those who take the time to uh, nurture their, their uh, hobbies, their skills, whatever they are, right? I mean, first of all, it's a way to, like, check out of the online noise, right? And there's certainly a lot of online noise, right? So it's a way to sort of, I mean, for me, yeah, I'm doing it on a live stream and so I'm chatting and I'm trying to be entertaining and trying to keep the conversation going. But normally when I do this, like I did this at home this morning, um, I'm quiet, right? And it kind of, it just helps bring me down and not in a bad way, just sort of like, you know, like I wake up in the morning and I look at the phone, right? Because it's right there. I look at the phone and I see what in the world has happened. <laughs> or if that guy's in jail yet or if that guy's in jail yet, right? Um, not really. I'm not sitting around waiting for people to go to jail. I, it would be nice to welcome that news, though. <laughs> well, that's a long shot, right? So I look at the phone and I see what's happening and so then I'm like Ugh. and then you always see like artists who have posted work in the night and you go oh look how good they are and how bad I am I'm like the worst artist in the world although I don't believe that anymore I think I'm a very good artist because <laughs> I practice and I know it I see it I see my art has improved I practice a lot and I know my art has improved I can draw very quickly that was never a goal kind of a goal though I like to draw and then go have lunch, right? I can draw very quickly and I can draw pretty accurately, but not like I don't want to be like architect accurate because that's not my goal. My goal, my, 
my ongoing goal, and the goalpost is always moving, is just to be able to draw charismatically. Draw my world charismatically. You know, I'm not really one to sit around and draw third eyes and the Holy Ghost and <laughs> woo-woo stuff. I like woo-woo stuff, but I don't really like drawing it. I like drawing things that are around me, right? The cafe scene, there's a couple there. They're very close, very lovey-dovey. That would be a nice drawing, but I'm busy doing my line on that. I like drawing cafe scenes, right? There's always a lot of energy. This one's very cute with the little street lights and you know it's a popular spot here in Condesa there's interesting people walking by there's people just walking by going to the gym going to work just walking the dog right like I am an observer of life and I like to capture that in my drawings I just like to capture the world around me in my drawings and I think it's one of the reasons why it makes living in Mexico City so fascinating you know, it's not my city per se. Does any city belong to us, right? I, Mexico City, there's there's tension here about whose city is it and the gringos that have moved in and causing gentrification. And I mean, that issue's going on everywhere, right? I mean, I got pushed out of Chicago. I couldn't have, I can't afford to live there. Um, and so a feel for the folks that are being pushed out of their neighborhoods, right? It's not a good feel. It's very sad, right? Like to know that I couldn't afford to live in the place that I knew as my home, right? Now it's 2023 and people are moving about. It's not like we all stay in our hometown and the thought of staying in my hometown is actually kind of off. I mean, I grew up in Crystal Lake. I could never imagine. I know people that have never left there and I'm like, how in the world can you do that? So, I mean, we're all very mobile, right? And because we can, many of us can work online, you can work, you can choose where to live, right? So. Um, what am I talking about? I'm talking about um, one of the reasons why I love living in Mexico City because it's a fascinating culture. It's fascinating history. I love, I'm love. i more interested in this Mexico City history than I've ever been in any history. I mean, I like history. I like knowing that stuff, but I was never like going out and signing up for groups and walking tours and to learn about the history of Chicago or pretty much any place in the United States. But here, Mexico City, with the Aztec civilization, the Mayans, the Zapotec, now that's all of Mexico, not just Mexico City. But just to learn about civilizations, that you can literally see the, the clues, the remnants of these ancient civilizations that are no longer here, and they're gone. And uh, a lot of them, there's not really, no one really knows why they left <laughs> or where they went, right? Fascinating stuff. Right? Like, is, could that happen to us? It makes me feel more um, not so uh, upset about uh, <laughs> that lady totally just gave me the, what the hell are you doing? And, uh, yeah, she didn't like my deal at all. But anyways, what was I saying? Um, it, okay, so learning about Mexicans, Mexico's history makes me um, be comforted by the uncertainty of my own history right i mean there's this whole thing going on in the united states banning books that you know these white jerks are uncomfortable about with but honestly if something about your the place where you come from the place where you live if something that happened in the past makes you uncomfortable i think that's even more impetus to learn about it and understand what happened and be um and, and, and no, why? Why does it make you uncomfortable? What happened? What is it, right? And in, and in the United States, there is a lot to be uncomfortable about. Um, so, anyways, learning about Mexico's history as I'm living here by myself, drawing it, um, I guess in a way because I'm, I feel somewhat detached from it because I'm not from here. Um, but it just gives me a sense of like, well, I'm not from here. And this, the human condition and the human evolution is, has been the constant, right? Like the more I learn about the Aztecs, their, their fall down was their humanness, right? You look, you look at like these politicians that are falling down in the United States, it's their human condition that's getting them in trouble, right? They're jerks and they're... <laughs> And they're they're jerks, right? And they like to hurt others, or they're 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 greedy, or whatever, right? 
that's their fall down, right? In the quest for power and control and domination, the human condition can get in the way. Oh my God, what am I talking about today? <laughs> I'm talking about the importance of learning history. And I'm not even a history anything, except I'm just a curious history want to know her. <laughs> I don't have any claim to anything except that I can draw. And I like to draw, right? But m living in Mexico City has totally sparked my interest in wanting to learn history. Because maybe because I am detached from it and uh, I'm living in this city that's full of historical remnants from civilizations gone by and civilizations that are still here and tried to capture the city and um, so anyways being a artist who likes to draw my world uh, learning about the history of it is just like a bonus right I mean when I was in San Miguel it's uh, it feels a little cut off is that the right thing to say from Mexican Mexico's history I mean it's the birthplace of the revolution and all that so there's that Guanajuato Dolores y Odago the start of the Mexican revolution but it's kind of a gringo fantasy land right so I never really felt all that engaged with Mexico's history but moving to Mexico City completely changed that right this is not designed for the comforts of the retired expat here. This is a working, thriving, pulsating, vibrant, complicated, energetically super heavy, yet inspiring city. I mean, I can't even uh, fully describe it yet, right? It's a very complicated city. and. You know, it, it, and oftentimes the United folks from the United States just see it and assume it to be a violent, ugly place. And I, honestly, I know that's here, but really, there's nothing farther from the truth. This is honestly one of the, you know, as an artist who loves to draw, this is I couldn't be in any better city. I mean, sure, I would like to be in Europe. I would like to visit Europe. Do I want to live there? Maybe someday. I don't know, but cost of living wise it's pretty it's like right up there with the United States right the United States is off the charts um, I can afford to live in Mexico City and be an artist right now it's not perfect <laughs> some days I'm a little hungrier than others some days I'm a little fuller than others right so um, you know I'm not a starving artist which I think that you know, just growing up with the family I grew up with, like, of course, if you were to want to be an artist, of course you're going to starve. Of course, I mean, no matter what you do, you're going to starve because that's the kind of family I grew up with. Very, like, you know, my mom was always like, we are stock people. We will have to work hard for everything. And I didn't really understand what she meant by that, but I understand it now because um, that's what she did. She worked very hard. Like, her hands were like... They were very hard, right? She worked very, very, very hard. If she were to see my hands right now, I mean, she'd be like, do you even work? <laughs> I do keep my hands protected, though, because they're my, they're my magic hands, right? This is where the magic comes out of, right? So I do, I try to keep my hands safe, right? I, if I lose my hands, <laughs> but then what, right? Uh, <laughs> So anyways, uh, you know, having grown up with this mentality of like, you will have to work hard for everything you do, of course I would think that being an artist would mean that I would be starving and, you know, bereft and unhappy and uh, just homeless maybe. I don't know about homeless, but it would be very hard, right? And you look at the lives of the women artists you know, in history, a lot of these women who made it, made it, didn't make it till after they were dead, right? And so their lives were filled with hardship. I mean, who was an artist that had it easy? Well, no one has it easy in life, right? Life is life, no matter what, even if you have money, right? <clears throat> Frida Kahlo, her family was wealthy, 
her father was from Germany, right? So she wasn't fully Mexican, right? I've heard Mexicans say, you're like, oh, yeah, the German princess, right? Because she embodied the Mexican spirit, but she was half German, half Mexican, right? Um, and so I've seen some Mexicans just be like, yeah, European princess, right? No one ever belongs, right? I mean, ever, as, uh, people are always going to bust your chops no matter what, right? <laughs> what am I saying? Oh, yeah, I was trying to figure out which women artists. Like, okay, just for example, I heard the name yesterday, Gloria Vanderbilt. A very, very, very wealthy woman, right? Family, long, old money, the Vanderbilts, right? Her life was not easy. She, what did she, she designed jeans. I used to have them when I was in eighth grade. I love them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like even having all that money, that family was just, just rife with uh, tragedy and uh, loss and death and everything, right? So even if you have money, that's no, that doesn't mean things are going to be easy, right? So anyways, boy, I'm really going off on a tangent today. But uh, honestly, being an artist and living in a fascinating city, I feel very grateful to have the, the, the opportunity to do this. And I don't want to live here and just not know anything about it. I think that's how a lot of Americans are perceived as coming here and just wanting to recreate their American lifestyle here and not know anything about the Mexican life the Mexican history, the Mexican uh, hardships, right? I mean, it wasn't all that long ago. Someone told me it was time for me to go home. <laughs> and I was like, oh, in Condesa? Um, you know, like, um, first of all, I'm like, I this is my home. I don't have any other home. I suppose the United States is my mother country, but I don't have a home there. <clears throat> um, you know, so... I think whatever you can do to stay connected to your art. So I personally, I like to draw it. I like to go out and urban sketch. I am an urban sketcher and uh, I like to sketch on location. I like to do other art as well. I'm not just solely urban sketcher because that's no way to live. <laughs> There's more to life. I want the full artist experience, right? So, let's see here. So, enjoy your artist experience, right? Just learn things. You know, learn things. Learn about the ones that have come before us, right? Oh, look at this. It's like a butterfly. <laughs> yeah, I'm finishing big with a heart. Go easy on myself, go easy on others, go easy on myself. Go easy on others, right? <clears throat> go easy on myself, go easy on others. Go easy on myself, go easy on others, right? Ooh, this little butterfly is a little, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> The whole point of the drawing warm-up is not to draw anything, right? It's to disengage from your ego that wants to be like, here, let me show you how awful you draw, right? <laughs> the warm-up is to just be like, just do the lines, condition your arm, condition your hand to like move through, make the mark, make the mark, make the line and move on, right? Life's short, move on, make the line, move on, make your art know your history, learn your history, right? And then move on. Alrighty. <laughs> there he is. He's like a butterfly flying off the page. <laughs> Alright everybody. Uh, so good uh, to, to have the opportunity to be sitting here in Mexico City, beautiful Mexico City having a beautiful latte under all the trees, right? There's a ton of trees in Mexico City. And I'm like, I can't even see the sky anymore. There's so many beautiful trees. My house is just like a block over that, like two blocks that way. And uh, I'm gonna go home and do my fundamentals class. And Wednesday, the last Wednesday, 
of every month in Mexico City, the, all the museums stay open late. Noche de los museos, de las los museos, right? The night of the museums. And so all the big museums have like music or something. And so I'm going to go down to the National Museum of Art this evening where the Monets are on display. The Monets arrived like about a month ago and I haven't been there yet. So I'm going to go down to the National Museum of Art for Noche de, Noche de los Museos to see a little music and do some drawing. Yeah, museum drawing. So have a great day. Feel free to join the fundamentalist. <laughs> Wait a minute. The Continuous Line Fundamentals, the new session starts Friday. June session starts Friday. We're on the last day of May. Can you believe it? I got to go pay my rent, and I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Bye. See you in June.